All right. I've got a, another proof of concept. So this is uh, still in development as well. This is tied to the train remote, um, but the train remote was a mini game, which meant you go, you would go in and out of that mini game, and it has very specific start, very specific end. Um, that's actually built on a bunch of components, um, and uh, all those pieces can be put together in so many thousands of ways to do so many thousands of things. Um, and two of those pieces that I'm working on now, the naming may change. Um, but it's essentially conditional effects um, and then chained uh, effects. Um, and the idea being behind those two, those are the key to a ton of the new stuff that's coming. Um, so a conditional effect is an effect that you trigger, um, but after you trigger it, there's actually uh, an interactive period where you can actually engage with it or not. Um, and that allows for this, but it allows for a ton of other ideas that I have. Um, and then the second piece of it is the idea of chaining effects, um, where if you do an effect after a condition, we can actually chain that into additional things. Um, and, and it'll make more sense as more of these pieces are all put together. Uh, but so, one of the things I'm, I'm messing with is, I know some people like the idea of having a blaster sound separate from a blast deflection. So you would hear the blaster shot, and then you would have your deflection. Like in the video games, like in the films, um, typically on prop, you usually just have the blaster deflection sound. Um, we do have the ability to put the blaster sound, um, and how I've done it is the blaster sound is actually going to be separate. Um, so the idea now is we can actually have the blaster sound separate. When the blaster sound occurs, um, and this is kind of a game type thing, um, but it's not a mini game, um, you can react to that. So if you, so, you know, obviously if you're a Jedi or whatever, and even in the films, they don't necessarily have to block every blast, particularly if stormtroopers have terrible aim. Um, so you can now choose, so you can trigger the blaster sound, but if you don't react to it, nothing happens on the blade and there's no secondary effect. If you have the blaster sound play, you have a very short window of time to deflect it, that will then show up on the blade. So the idea is, this is the conditional effect. If you decide after that blaster sound to deflect it, you move your saber, it'll deflect. If you decide, oh, I just stepped out of the way or the aim was terrible and it didn't actually hit my blade, you could still have the blaster sound but have no effect. Um, and then, actually, I'll, I'll show that the second piece of that later. So, so what I'm going to do, I have this set up to replace multi-blast. So this would kind of fall into a multi-blast V2, um, but it is a little different because it actually now will use blaster sounds separate from the blast, which is the deflection sound. So you have a first sound, and then you have a second sound with an effect. So I'm going to do, you'll hear a blaster sound first. Now, these sounds I kind of chopped up from other fonts, so they're not perfect, um, but they're for testing. But so I'm going to do the blaster sound first. And I'm going to not react to it. Nothing will happen on the blade. And there is no secondary chained effect. So that was the blast sound. I know it sounds bad. Um, but nothing happened. Um, and nothing now because I have a very short window after that blast sound to actually deflect it. This time I'm going to deflect it. Now this is also now set up to, if I do deflect, it actually chains itself into more blasts and more deflections. Um, so every time you're going to um, deflect, you can you have that option to deflect the um, deflect or not. So this time I'm going to deflect it and I have to respond quickly. And this is, again, a game type thing. It's response time. You have a short window which you can edit, um, but it's not realistic if the blast happens and you don't deflect within a certain time. Um, but so this will let you set it up for those who like the blaster sound separate and add that conditional effect capability and then chain it so you don't have to keep hitting the button. So what will happen is if I deflect the first one, now this particular one is set up to do a very specific sequence of blocks. So, but the second one I'm going to show actually is randomized, so you don't even know how many blasts are coming. So we'll go. So uh, this one's set up to happen a minimum, maximum of three times, and then it'll stop. And you can set it up however many you want. You can set it up to loop indefinitely. Um, there's a lot, I mean, the controls are going to be limited to you, uh, limited to your imagination, and they're all in the style. So you can have, um, previously, multi-blast is in my prop, and it's a mode you go in and out of. This is different from that in that every preset, every style can be different, um, and I'll show that in a second. But So this time around, I'll do it one more time. So the idea is, every time you hear the blaster sound, you have to move your saber if you want to deflect it. If I don't move the saber, it actually won't deflect. So I'll block two, and then I'll purposely not swing on the third.
And that time I moved out of the way of it and the blast went past me, so there was nothing on the blade. Um, so it lets you kind of get, uh, this takes that interactive stuff we had in OS 6, and OS 7 is going to take it like to the nth degree because this is a really small piece. Um, but so let me show you with the randomization so that it's, you can't even, the idea is when somebody's shooting at you, you don't predict ahead of time how many times they're firing. You don't even know how many enemies there are. So the second one actually has a randomized number of blasts that'll continue. Um, and it can be, I, I think this one's set for minimum of three, maximum of ten. But it's going to randomly pick how many new blasts occur after you deflect them. So let's switch over to that. I think this was it. All right. So, uh, and the effects are purposely simple. Excuse me. Um, the idea being, though, this conditional effect is a blaster effect that you choose if you want to deflect it or not. This is actually separate from blast. So if I just click, I have my normal blast still active. So those of you who just like the blast, um, you can set that up. I mean, you can set it up to do both. That's what this is actually set up to do. If I just click off, it'll just do blast. Um, but if I want to have the blaster for this particular setup, it replaces multi-blast. So it's a long click on aux. It'll first fire the blaster sound, and then you have about a half a second. Now, it depends on the length of the blaster sound. It actually, and that's part of the whole thing with all of this OS 7 interactive capabilities, is we're really tying the fonts and the styles together so that they react to what's happening, as well as how long those sounds are. Um, and it's again, it's it's taking that baseline of what we did in OS 6 and just upping the ante like tenfold. Um, so your reaction time has to be pretty quick, and we can actually tighten it. I purposely left it a little bit longer so I give you a buffer after the blast sound to react. Um, but if you really want to make it kind of a challenge type thing, more like the the, the rem training remote which had a really tight window, you can also tighten that up. Everything's editable. Um, all the effects. These this sequence capability or the the change capability uses existing effects. It just enhances them and adds this interactive capability on top of it. And again, all of this is layered. So it's a layer that I would add. I can have an old, I can even have a previous OS 6 style. I can layer in this conditional um, effect capability and use that and carry it over and add this new capability to it. So and it, uh, without being able to you know, go through all the code, there's so unlimited, I mean, literally unlimited possibilities for what we're going to do with this stuff. But so let's get into it. So this time, it's going to actually, the number of blasts that occur are going to be random. So if you deflect, if you stop deflecting, it will then stop itself. Um, so you can choose when you want to end kind of the sequence, even if it's randomly choosing it. So we'll do... was obviously max so the number of times that those blasts keep happening is now random so the previous one was always going to be three blasts um, but this one's set up to run random so if I do it again it'll actually have a different number of blasts and the, re the, the conditional part the reaction time is based on a really quick movement of the blade um, so if you move quickly enough you'll trigger the next in the sequence longer that was probably the maximum one but the number there is randomized and again you can also pick how long so that one I think I set minimum three maximum ten for the repeat and what it does is every time you deflect it it then decides if it's going to do another blaster sound or not and then it, you react to it so it conditionally changes based on if I'm reacting to the blast or not um, but so again simple demo actually there's so much more we can do with this but this new ability um, first of all to have the blaster sound separate for those who like it um, and then add this interactive conditional capability on top of it. And then on top of that, we're chaining what happens. And that's where you have the repeat of it. So instead of every time I press the button, it's going to play a blast and I'm going to block it, which you could do if you want. Um, you can now set it up so that there's actually chained effects. So if I do block it, it says, okay, you did block it, do it again. 
and then you set how many times you want it to do it again. And like I said, you can have a fixed number of times for the blast to happen, or the blaster. So blaster sounds are separate from blast sounds. The blaster sound will be a new sound in your font, so you'll have to set it up. Um, you will need a prop file that will support this capability, at least in its current iteration. Um, and there will obviously be new style code. Um, but you can set up how you want it to run, how often you want it to repeat itself, if you want it to repeat. You can have it so that every time you do the blast, it's a single shot and a single deflection, if you choose. So, And that's the part of it. The conditional part is the setup in the style, where you hear the blaster sound, if I react within X number of milliseconds, it'll block it. If I don't react, it won't block it. Um, and that's the kind of the more reality. So instead of it every time blasters happen, you're deflecting it, like I said, even in the films, there's times where blasts go past the Jedi, they don't bother deflecting them, they could dodge them, stand out of the way, that's all now built into this. Um, so, there'll be obviously a lot of documentation, but again, this is just a tiny, tiny piece of what's going to be possible because we're able to set up these conditional effects, because we're going to be able to chain these effects, and how we chain them and what conditions trigger them is really up to you. It's going to be any function you want, you can set them up so that the effect, when you trigger it, then waits in that interactive period, which is a timer that you put into the style, and if you do what you're supposed to do to trigger it in that, it'll then go on to the next thing and the next thing as many times as you want it, you set it all up, and you can have every preset be different. So it's not repetition, and like I said, this one, because it's random, I don't know how many blasts are actually coming, so I have to stay on my feet and block them. Um, but so, still a ton of stuff in the works. Again, this is just the tip. So the Training remote mini game was a really small piece of this uh, using a ton of the new functionality. This is another really small piece of this using a bunch of the new functionality. Um, but there's just so much more that as I develop it, um, Frederick's doing a ton of work, um, you know, obviously to get other pieces done. As those pieces all come together, we're going to be able to kind of take pieces from all over the place and build all these really crazy interactive capabilities, this game type capabilities, these responsive capabilities. Um, and instead of just having like a really simple effect that just you press a button, it does something, you press a button, it does something, you press a button, it does the same thing, um, we're going to be able to really get almost into that video game feel where you press a button and you have to react to it. You have to do something else. You have to do several different things. You have, like We can build all of that now into these styles. So uh, what you're going to be able to do is, I mean, it is, we've always said limitless. Now it's limitless to the nth degree. Um, it's really just what we come up with creatively, what somebody thinks of. Um, the font integration, being able to take new sounds and new font capabilities, tie them into styles, and really weave them really tightly together so that your styles, your effects, and your font are all working together to just create this brand new um, kind of immersive feel to your saber. So there's, there's so much coming. And I'm super excited. As I get these pieces working, I'll keep shooting new shots, uh, new demos, and uh, putting them up. But a lot coming, guys. I hope you enjoy.